morning, I'm Van Worth. Now, I want to discuss with you what this is about. As I get ready to do this, I realize, you know what, I should show you the books. That piece you saw there is a uh, is what is considered the first piece of this collection of drawings that I did. And these drawings, there's about 400 of them. I'm not going to show them all to you, but I'll just show you. This is book four. And this is a drawing, this is about the Holocaust. So there's 400 drawings. There's six books. <clears throat> so it took me 10 years to do those drawings. I moved from Los Angeles to Albuquerque, where I was a painter there in, in LA. And then I decided to start doing something else because I needed to make money. Making money is a very difficult thing for artists many times. So I started going back over these drawing books I had. All of the drawing books that you see there are drawing books that I had prior to starting a series of drawings. So I would make additions to some drawings that were in there, and I would make changes in there, and then one day something happened in those drawings, and it, the drawing that I was doing said Holocaust for some reason. I don't know why. I did not intend to sit for 10 years and draw 400 Holocaust drawings. It wasn't part of the plan. There was no plan at all. The, the reason that I was doing that is because I was living in Los Angeles and I had a, a big studio there. And then I left and I came to New Mexico and I had a small apartment. And I wasn't able really to paint there. So that's why I started going back into these drawings because I wanted to do, I wanted to to do that. And so these drawings, at some point, one of the drawings said Holocaust, and I didn't really think much of that. It was, you know, it was just another drawing, and I kept drawing, and, and then all of a sudden these images started to pop up. And so at that point, they kept popping up. They kept appearing as these Holocaust drawings, and I had no idea where it came from. I'm not Jewish, but I had this, I remember as a child watching this program, Walter Cronkite's The Twentieth Century, and it was, it wasn't that long after World War II that I was watching this, because this was in the I guess the late 50s into the early 60s. And I came on every Sunday, the 20th century. And so I could have possibly gotten these images and this from there, I don't know. But what happened was I started to do these drawings and this suitcase started to pop up. I can't even remember how it started. But what it is, is that this is the piece that I decided is the first piece in the collection. It's not the first piece I did, but it, it is the first piece of the collection. And what it is, is a breakfast scene where this young couple with a little flower on their table are preparing breakfast because they have got these orders to go to the train station because they're going to the work camp. This is the grand deception. You're going to the work camp. 
So they have a suitcase here, and inside their suitcase are things like warm socks and gloves and stuff that they need because they're going to be going to the work camp, so they want to be prepared. So you, this, this suitcase is a, is a ever-recurring theme within this series. And so they get to the train station, and they get on the train, and the train's leaving, and they look back at the train station on the siding of the trains. They forgot their luggage. They're going to the work camp, and now they don't have any, they have no, no work clothes, no gloves, no nothing. Now they don't know what they're going to do. How are they going to make it at the work camp? They, they forgot everything. He thought she got it. She thought he got it. They left it. And as I continued to do this series, I started to think about the people on this train who had forgotten their stuff. Or whatever. It's, I, it, the whole thing is, is sort of a blur in a way. But what I started to realize, I do remember that I started to try to put myself in some way into the heads of these, these people. And on the train, even, even the conditions were horrible. It wasn't like they were getting on an Amtrak going to uh, going across country. They were in cattle cars stuffed in there like cattle. So there had to be people that were there feeling doomed. And there were probably people that were saying, well, you know, it's bad, you know, we're, we're, we're packed in here like this, but don't worry about it, we're going to be at the work camp soon, and, and then we'll be all be able to get out and shower, and we'll, you know, we're going to get out of this, don't worry. And so I started to think, well, they're going to the death camp, but if they're going to the work camp, then that's going to be like going to the circus compared to where they actually went. So at that point, the imagery started to come into focus that lots of clown imagery and imagery of the circus started to come into these drawings because they were going to the work camp, which is they were going to the circus. They were going to some place that not, now the circus is not always fun, but the circus is the circus. So you can, you go there and you, and you do what you do at the circus, and then you go home. They weren't going to the circus. They were going to their death. But the, the work camp would have been like going to a circus. So it was all of this grand deception. The whole thing was a deception. It was lies the whole time. Come to the work, come to the train station, you're going to the work camp. The whole trip is going to the work camp. So this is the first piece in this series, and I said, well, I have 400 drawings, so what do artists usually do with their drawings? Well, they turn them into paintings or whatever. I mean, I never did that. I, when I did paintings, I just approached the canvas with the paint and bam, started painting. You know, that's the way I painted. So I didn't really have any history in doing studies. But I had 400 drawings, so I said, well, these are studies. You know, I, these are studies. But I can't, I, I'm not going to be doing this series, I don't think, because I, I don't really believe that at this point that making paintings of these is the art. The art are the drawings. The art is the drawings. But I, I started this process, and this is the first one that I did, it's a study. It's like a, a rendering or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what you call it, but because I didn't, I never painted like this. I would just approach the surface of the canvas, bam, and start painting, and then whatever developed is what it was. So this is totally new for me. So I, I laid it in like that, and this is what it was. And then I started to think that maybe this is not what I should be doing. Because I don't, I don't want to be immersed in something that is so dark. I was immersed in it for 10 years. That's enough. So I don't want to be immersed in darkness in painting. 
But I did this piece, and then I did this other piece. And this is the piece I did on top of this, these puzzles, because I like the surface of these. I like the surface, because this, these are all puzzle pieces in paper, all glued on there. And I like the surface, the texture, because I like that. Because I grew up in New Mexico around a lot of rocks, and it's a very textural piece. So I like that. So I did that. I did this piece. So now let me show you how the the uh, series progressed is there is a progression there's this piece here which is the first study the first piece to be the first piece of the painting series. And I started off with this. I had done it in reverse. This was at the top. I made it real washy because this is a dark subject, so I wanted to make it dark. So I started doing that. Now, underneath here, I paint on this paper. This is a paper right here. This is a uh, this is tissue paper from patterns, dress patterns, or whatever kind of patterns. And I like the surface and I like the color. And this is how I start off these paintings. And I got I started looking at this and I started looking at these pieces here where that where that's this these. Uh, let's see if I can get this. Well, I don't want to move that. These these pieces these patterns of of uh, these parts of these patterns and it's got this really crisp border around it and these began to start to look like aerial views or uh, more like architectural drawings of the of the Holocaust sites like these are these would be barracks this would be the the wall the fence around there. And then I started looking at this, and then here we have, right here, we have this, this arch. There's an arch right here, which is very reminiscent of the, of the, uh, the entrance to, the, to, uh, to Auschwitz, although Auschwitz was more, it was square, but it's still an entrance. And then you have down here, you have these, these uh, right here you have these, these small parallel lines, which are very reminiscent of railroad tracks. And they're going into this, into this, into this area right here through the gates and into the death camp. So that's what that that's what that is. And so I'll show you as the progression because the because this piece was intended to be the background. Boy, because there's a lot of glare on this thing. I gotta rearrange this thing somehow. this will make any difference. Let 
Well, that'll, that's a little bit better. It's not perfect, but it's a little bit of an angle. But this is just to show you what the basics, basics are. So this was, this, is, this was originally intended to be the, the, the base for putting on top that, uh, the breakfast scene that I showed you. And I was looking at it, and I was thinking, well, I want to see what it looks like upside down. And it turned into this black fire. It looks like a fire to me. This, this fire is coming up here like this. And here's a big fire right here. And it's a black fire and smoke. I said, okay, I'll do, it. I'll do it this way. Instead of having it come down like black rain, I'll have it going up like black fire. And then that's when I noticed this this entrance here. And then that's when I noticed this railroad track. And then that's when I noticed these barracks. So this piece is finished. This is the first piece in the series. Now this is the second piece, well actually this is, well, this is the second piece, but this is, there are these pieces here, that's uh, kind of, obviously I'm not a professional at doing this. So this is the first piece with, the, with this in this particular series, and this piece is called the inevitability of fall. And you can see there's, there's lines here. There's a little arrowhead. There's a little arrow right here, which is I, I thought that was very fascinating. Right here by this fork and knife, there's an arrow pointing that way from the patterning. So there's, here's the lines in the back with the, with the death camp laid out. Okay. They all have this pattern in the back except for one piece, which I'll discuss later. Because this is the inevitability. The inevitability is the fact that they're going to the death camp. They are going to the death camp. That's the inevitability. Now, they didn't all go to the death camp, but in the end, that's where they were going to go. That was the plan, that everybody went there. So this is the inevitability of fall. That... As fall turns into winter, winter into spring, spring into summer, this, this inevitability, the cycle of inevitability, this is the inevitability of fall. So there are lots of people that went in the fall in different seasons. So this is that one, the inevitability of fall. Now the inevitability of, of winter
It's a darkness. And it has the patterning. Here's the lines, the fences. The fences in the concentration camp. And there's this blood. Lots of blood was shed. Lots of people died. The human blood on this piece. That's the only coloration on this piece. Now this, this piece right here, all of this golden kind of color, this is from the, from the patterning, from the patterns, the inevitability, the inevitability of the destination at which they're going to go. They're going to the death camp. That is the inevitability of this. That's winter. spring. Things are starting to get a little brighter. Things are getting a little brighter. Things are starting to come up. There's a lot of dead stuff around, but then there's a little bit of life coming back. <clears throat> and here, still the inevitability. There's the tracks, the railroad tracks coming in. You see these things all over these pieces. This is almost totally covered, but you, it's still there. The inevitability is still there. Even though it's, spring is starting to come, it's still there. This is summer, and this is the only one that doesn't have the inevitability of the concentration camp. So there's hope. There's hope. There's hope for all of us, no matter what kind of trials and tribulations we're going through, there's some kind of hope. There is hope. Now there was a lot of dead people in this. The Holocaust killed millions. So this, this work is, is trying, to, trying to say something about it. But there's nothing that I can say really. There's nothing I can say to, through this work, to give anybody anything close to the experience of hearing that 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 metal on metal clanking of that cattle car lock being closed. There's nothing I can do. So this is just a an inadequate response to that. The drawings are inadequate as well, but the drawings have more power because I was doing them at the time in a series and I was immersed in that. So I'm not going to be doing any more of this series. This, this series, for all practical purposes, is over. Unless I change my mind, which it happens quite often. But there are four, seven pieces, I guess, in this series. These four five, six, seven pieces in this series. So that's, that's the end of this. Uh, and I don't know what to call this series, the, inevitable, the, in, the inevitability of evil, or the inevitability of, I don't know what it, I have no idea what it's going to be called. But it's, it's from my drawing series. So there's the inevitability of spring, uh, 
summer, fall, and winter. And you can change the order. Because this one, this is the, the last one. And this is the only one that doesn't have underneath the, uh, the death camp uh, imagery. It doesn't have any, there's no, this, this, is, this does not have, have uh, the, uh, the pattern. Let me show you what the patterns look like. That's what they look like. That's what that is. So that's the series, and I do not know what's going to happen, but I do know that these pieces are finished, and I'm happy about it. I'm Van Moore. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye.